play and call it work. Hey there guys, Cullen here from Mini Wargaming for another Open Vault, the weekly behind the scenes style show where I walk around and show you guys what's up on a daily basis at Mini Wargaming. So we are back from Adepticon. So that was Josh, me, Steve, Aaron, Matthew, and Chris. Those are all the people who went, so we will definitely be talking to them and how it, uh, you know, what they did and, you know, if they did any events and how they went and things like that. Um, so we'll be getting to everyone. As for right now, I here am just working on the new Open Vault intro, which you would have seen because you just watched this. So, new intro, that's what this morning was, as well as getting the Wrath and Glory ready to go, because that is uh, going to be coming out Friday, of course, because we're back to our live streaming schedule. That'll get a little messed up once we move, because that is definitely coming soon. So that's another thing on everyone's mind, is uh, getting packed up and ready to go, because we are... Uh, this week and the next week is I think our last full week here before moving starts, so it's uh, coming soon Yikes But that's kind of me. Let's uh, see what Josh is up to over there behind Matthew's DM screen lurking What is Josh up to? Uh, I am currently <clears throat> Doing the content schedule for the rest of this week Mm -hmm. As well as doing everybody's filming schedules for next week. So just trying to get caught up after Depticon. Um, yeah, obviously that kind of put us at, played with the schedules a little bit. And yeah, then with the move coming soon, that's another thing. To a degree. So yeah, just kind of doing the day-to-day, -day, you know, people having to take time off. And just trying to make sure we have all the content we need and film a ton before we leave these, uh, this old, old building of ours. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm um, just bombing through all the schedule now. Mostly just putting stuff in for next week, though. Cool, cool. Yes. So how was Adepticon, Josh? Uh, a lot of fun. So this is the third time I've went, but the first time I wasn't working. So I've still made some, you know, businessy type uh, um, connections, because it's all about networking and stuff like that. But then, yeah, I uh, got to just kind of hang out, play some demos, and... Uh, just hang out with uh, other gamers there. So yeah, it was uh, definitely super nice seeing everyone. Yeah. So yeah. Both people that we've seen before and people we've never met before. Right. So it was nice to see everybody. If you were one of those people who came up and said hi, that was nice to you. And, uh, and if you were one of those people who what, didn't or saw us and, you know, was like, I didn't want to approach you guys because I didn't want to bother you. Well, that was, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. Or, or, or just somebody that, you know, yelled something from far away. Totally cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I heard at least like one one boo Canada from like a distance. <laughs> I think, um, but that tends to happen. Yeah, I think it's happened every year so far. So nice, nice. But yeah. Um, highlight of the trip. I think the highlight's always just getting to to kind of you know hang out with other gamers and talk about gaming and other related type stuff. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, for me that's it's nice just to get to kind of hang out and. Not even necessarily be playing games, but just uh, getting to socialize a bit. Yeah, because you and I, we didn't bring armies down. Now, Steve did. He's not in today, but he did film a couple games, which you'll probably see on his channel, assuming the audio isn't completely awful because the tournament hall was loud. So hopefully those videos at least turn out for him. Even then, I, I would, I'd be surprised if he didn't find some way to salvage at least most of the footage. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff on the go right now. We have been, I don't think it's something we're going to do for the channel. Uh, but then again, who knows? A bunch of us picked up some stuff for the Song of Ice and Fire Ministers game. Right over there, you can see Josh's stuff. Yes, uh, or at least the most, all the stuff I picked up from down at Adepticon. I got a little bit more on the way, hopefully. Because mm -hmm. um, you are going to be collecting House Bolton. Yes, I'm going to go House Bolton. Uh, with a Stark kind of slant towards it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be doing Stark. We got, uh, when I go into the back, you'll, I'll show you Steve's desk, which is covered in a bunch of Song of Ice and Fire stuff. Yep. And uh, I think he's got, it, it, I don't know what his final decision was. Do you? Is it the Free Folk? 
Um, where the wildlings? I think he's going to end up playing Free Folk. Okay. As his main. But he, I don't know, he bounces around. He's got Free Folk stuff back there. He's got Night Watch stuff. And he's got Lannister stuff. Mm -hmm. We pretty much got one of all the starter boxes that are out right now. And then the other thing we got to mention, which I don't know if Josh is, is Age of Sigmar Champions. Yes. Um, I started playing Age of Sigmar Champions when the game first came out. So, that's, so that is the card game. Yes, if you're not familiar with it, it is the card game. Uh, put up by Play Fusion. Mm -hmm. So I've always had a lot of fun with it, but uh, when, the, when the guys here stopped playing, I kind of you know packed my stuff away, didn't think much of it. And then uh, when I went down to Georgia a couple weeks ago, Hunter and I were playing a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it kind of re rekindled my interest in it because they've got uh, the first expansion out, Onslaught, I think. The first expansion is just called Wave 1 or just Age of Sigmar Champions. Onslaught was the second expansion. Okay. Well, oh, I'm, okay. So the, the original was just Age of Sigmar Champions. And mm -hmm. the first like, expansion to the yes. game would be Onslaught. Yep. And then the second is the one that is coming out on this weekend, I guess, because we got to play a pre release of it. We did. We did the. Um, Onslaught First sealed. Strike. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was sealed, so we opened six packs and uh, got to make decks out of those and play in a five round tournament that broke down to a top eight. Yep. And then just went to Swiss. Mm hmm. Um, so Colin and I both took part in it. Uh, Colin took third. And that was the, see, the nice thing about champions. And I mean, you're good at card games, Colin. Like, yeah, I played a lot of Magic, so my brain works for card games. But the thing is, we've talked about it a lot, and champions isn't cheap magic like i think a lot of other card games out there kind of feel yeah they always kind of just feel like a watered down version of magic to me and this is the first kind of card game i've picked up since that really offers new mechanics i've never seen and fully utilized yep. so it, it's definitely a cool game to check out they do have an app if you want to just kind of download it and give it a go it's both available on steam and your phone yes if you're android ios so, uh, you know, if, if you like card games and like AOS, or, or one of the two even, I, I recommend giving it a try. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, because with the app, you, you basically link the phone version to the Steam version. Mm -hmm. And then that also links into your actual physical cards, because you were able to scan all your cards in. So everything you own physically, you own digitally as well. Which I think is just one of the coolest parts about this game. Uh, like, like that's fantastic. That's always been the, the weird part about playing a game, like a card game that, you know, requires a little bit more money than a typical game. It's yep. a little bit more of a constant investment, but this way you can actually double up on how you play both online and in person. Right. So <clears throat> down there playing, um, I got Colin interested in the game. So uh, Colin learned and then jumped into the event, basically. Yeah, I, two I think days later. two days later I was playing after doing that demo that they had set up. Yep, and then uh, Steve's thinking about jumping back in. Um, I think Aaron's taking some interest in the game. Luca and his buddies are probably going to jump back in. Matt and his wife bought into the game to start playing. So right, it's it's a fun fun game. Uh, so yeah, Colin, even though he was brand new, um, got the mechanics pretty quick, and you ended up taking the third place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Uh, Josh and I were paired against each other in the semifinals. It, oh, it'd be third or fourth. It's yeah. it's equal because it's Swiss, but yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was fantastic. I've always been a big fan of limited um, in card games where you kind of have to make a deck out of the new packs. So whether it's draft or sealed, uh, that was one of my biggest or my favorite parts of Magic. So it was kind of cool to do that again, but in a different setting and offer some new mechanics for things and also. Have familiar things that you know we know about in our game too yeah definitely so i mean where we kind of talked about it and with the app being the way it is um I'll, I'll leave it up to colin to figure out the techno wizardry of the whole thing but maybe we'll play a little bit on stream hopefully and i i think more of a hang out and talk kind of thing yeah something else instead of just sitting in the front in front of the camera and doing it that could be another easy one we can do, you know, jump on, play some games against some of the viewers, and just kind of hang out and talk. I think that might be fun. Mm -hmm. As opposed to doing like a how to play or an overly competitive. Exactly. Game. Yep. Just just something where we can hop on, play a little bit, hang out with you guys. We can play over the, like you can um, challenge people. So, you know, anyone out there could challenge us as well, and we could have that kind of fun back and forth of playing with viewers. So yeah, looking forward to that. That I don't know when we'll be able to start looking into that sort of stuff, but um, 
Yeah, who knows where that could end up leading. Mm-hmm. So it, I think what it comes down to is it's content that will be fun for us. I think fun for the viewers and is relatively hope I, I, I think relatively easy for us to produce. Yeah. So that's something that the hope is that we can do in addition to what we're doing now, as opposed to doing something bigger where it's like, what do we have to cut out to be able to do this? Mm -hmm. And so that 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 uh, you know that little bit of content there that we can do something hopefully new without getting rid of something that's pre-existing. That's super exciting for me. Awesome. That's, you know, good expansion. Yep. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I love card games. Any chance I can get, have to play a card game, I'm typically down, so. Yeah, you jumped right into wanting to learn it. I like cards. It, it's just a fun game. And it the is. nice thing, too, and it's only a broken record, uh, for the app, the app is free to download, mm -hmm. free to use, and you start off with one of the starter decks. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you want to unlock the other three starter decks, you don't have to pay for anything. You just do the quick little tutorial for each one. Right. And, and I think give you the I think with your account, too, you get one free draft, Yes. which you can do. Uh, the other ones, subsequently, you kind of have to pay for. But there's ways that like, if you do well enough, you can win in-game currency to kind of keep going off that, too. Yeah, yeah. which is they're, they're pretty generous with that sort of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. All around fun stuff. Yes. Okay. Well, That's what I got. All right, well, I will head out and leave you to your... Look at that. Look, look at that lovely schedule. Oh, Looks yeah. like a whole lot of nonsense. It pretty much is. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, Aaron's gone. I'm sure she'll be back. Mr. Chris, how was Adepticon, sir? Adepticon? Adepticon was fantastic. Had a lot of fun. Got to see people, shake hands, and... Yeah, S good to talk see you're kind of still... Unpacking, possibly, potentially, potentially, over here. Yeah, we, well, I mean, we're so close to our move, do I bother unpacking? You know, it's, I don't know. I'm. Part of me says, yeah, I probably should. And the other part says, nah. Eh. <laughs> Maybe just pull the stuff you need at the moment, right? Yeah, I, was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, bah. Bah. So what did you get up to while you were in... Chicago, because you not only went to Adepticon, but you also had a little bit of a family trip. Yeah, I took the family with me, and we went and checked out Chicago. Uh, it was like, that was the fourth Adepticon uh, that I've been to, and the other pr three previous, I had never seen Chicago, even though I'd been to Chicago three times before that, and never saw the city. And so this time I said, okay, we're bringing the family, and we're going to have some fun, and we're going to take some time, and we're going to go hit the city. And so we went and checked out sites, and you know, everybody follows my social media stuff scene where you know I was hit some of the spots I was hitting and yeah I had a lot of fun wonderful town uh, you know we took the uh, L train everywhere and you know um, it was just a lot of fun checked out some of the touristy sites didn't see them all of course uh, so that'll be uh, Chicago trip two mm -hmm. um, probably three who knows <laughs> but uh, yeah and then of course uh, yeah uh, it's probably why a lot of people probably didn't see me too much at Adepticon because I was off doing family stuff as well as doing con stuff. Mm -hmm. But all around, it was fun. The only thing that was tough was, uh, you know, going to Chicago, spending the whole day in the city, and then having to go and do a class at night or, you know, be on time for an event. I was late for my event. Uh, we had a big uh, meet and battle, Warhammer 40K, apocalypse size game, and yeah, I was a little bit late. I, was st I stressed out my organizer as he was wondering <laughs> where I was. And, yeah, so. Sorry. Yeah. You know what? It, it happens, and you were uh, being a busy man, so yeah, yeah. you made it, and uh, everyone seemed like they were having fun. Oh yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun, had some laughs. Um, we gave out a uh, best appearance award, which was to uh, Jason, who painted this wonderful Tyranid army. Uh, he used this red and metallic blue for the carapace. Uh, it looked really fantastic. There was a lot of great looking armies. Everybody's armies were all painted, and um, yeah, it was a lot. It was it was really nice and. Yeah, we just had fun. We sat around, laughed. Uh, it was like a six-hour game we played, but we stayed well past that. Just you know, sitting around and having some laughs, and yeah, wonderful. So yeah, it was uh, Adepticon was fun. Uh, if you've never been to Adepticon, I highly recommend it. Uh, it is probably the biggest wargaming uh, convention, solely wargaming, of course, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I highly would recommend anybody to go. And if you're from the other side, or you're on the other side of the pond, 
definitely come over and check that out because it is one of those events that runs all day long starting well basically Wednesday, Wednesdays become the unofficial start day and it just runs from Wednesday right till Sunday and everybody's war gaming there's tournaments and there's painting competitions and you know things I mean? for sale and just all oh, demos tons, to do tons like of it's stuff for sale it's, demos yeah demos all over the place there's the so many things to do even if you're not even signed up for an event which I didn't as well I there was so much to do with it oh yeah. yeah yeah and then of course just you know walk around and just meeting everybody is just really fantastic and talking with vendors and you know and um man oh and the cosplay people do right cosplay, yep. walking around i i there was a uh, a fellow who was a plague marine and i wanted to get a picture with him uh but i couldn't run into him again and it's i was oh i was disappointed <laughs> I, was, I was that was my disappointment there is not getting to get a selfie with the, the plague marine because it was a pretty cool costume yeah quit bragging i didn't get a photo with oh. it so <laughs> I saw him walking around too. I did not get a photo though, <laughs> unfortunately. Like <laughs> you didn't get a picture of him? Like, what kind of loser are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will leave you to yeah. it. And uh, we will see you next week. And Rob. Robity Rob. Rob. Hey. Why are you so jumpy? Why are you so jumpy? I'm not jumpy. <laughs> What's up, Rob? Nothing, just editing. Whoops. Pushing things off Mike's desk, you know, as you do. Usual, because he leaves stuff hanging around and it's just like keep bumping into it. <laughs> so what uh, editing projects are you working on? I am working right now on Luca's next Watchers and Death episode. Ooh, okay. Yes. And uh, you've been uh, a little bit busy the past little week. Oh yeah. Getting out all of the past campaigns that are going to be coming out on YouTube that were the goals for the 24-hour live stream. Yep. So those are, are they all done now or? No, no, no. I'm still working on them. Mm. There's a lot to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you are re-downloading them and. Yeah, I have to download them, so add stuff to them, uh, you know, kind of just make sure everything is matching together and then yep. re-rendering them and then re-uploading them with a different naming scheme and everything else. So takes a bit of time. It does take time, you know, but it, just like everything else, it's time. Time, mm. time, time. <laughs> okay, anything anything else you want to mention? Or, ooh, you're going to be starting a live stream this weekend, oh, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Thanks, Cole. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Saturday. We are doing a live streaming of Betrayal at House on the Hill. Okay, and where could people find that? Because um, I know you were talking about possibly streaming it on Facebook. Yeah, I may just be a Facebook exclusive stream. I'm not sure yet. Well, Colin's coming over tonight to help me set everything up. Mm -hmm. I did set it up, but I just want everything to be checked out because I don't want to be in the middle of streaming. And like, oh, yeah. I forgot this, or this needs to be done. Yeah. Or, but yeah. that'll determine if it's going to be on just Facebook or if it's going to be the usual on YouTube and Twitch. Okay. Don't know yet, but I will certainly make a video announcement tonight, late tonight. Okay. The way with the perfect details on that, or like the exact details on when and what. Yeah, exactly. When it is and where it's going to be and so forth. But it is going to be this Saturday. Man. That'll be on Facebook, so Board Game Maniacs yep. on Facebook. Yep. If you want to check that YouTube out. YouTube too, so I'll probably post it there just so all, the, all of our fans know too. Perfect. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Well, I will let you get back to your editing then, sir. Okay, thank you. Carry on. I'm just going to pop back here just to kind of show you some more of the song stuff. I still have a bunch of rats that I haven't had to work on because we were away. Vito's Thousand Sons he's brought in because he's playing a little bit of 30k. But, um, boom. Boom. So much stuff. So that's the Night's Watch. Lannisters and Stark box sets, and that's the Wildlings that Steve, I think, is going to be playing next, as that's why he has them out on his desk. So it's just kind of some of the stuff we got. Again, it is a movement tray game, so it's got that fantasy kind of feel that we've kind of missed with the Death of Fantasy, so I love me some rank and flank, and the demos were fantastic. They incorporate, like, cards. Uh, these aren't the right cards, but there's a card system in it. You know, all your units have proper cards. You get all the tokens, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you're a big fan of Game of Thrones, then it's uh, a good melding of both hobbying and, you know, a really great show. So, 
Big fan of it. Uh, Aaron, are you back? Oh, Aaron's back. How was Adepticon? My Adepticon was really good. Okay. I didn't sleep a lot. I, I, th I think that's I, a thing of Adepticon is what you got to be prepared for is not a lot of sleep. Well, I was in my hotel room painting till. Oh, till yeah, morning, uh, right. Thursday and Friday night because my stuff wasn't quite ready for Saturday. Mm hmm. And what was on Saturday then? Saturday was the second edition tournament and narrative game. Cool. So I was getting my exercise finished for that. Mm hmm. Mostly done still. <laughs> but they're presentable now. Yeah, you can put them on a table and not feel like they're unpainted, right? Yeah, I don't feel too bad about it. Okay, okay. Is that the only event you competed in, or...? No, I, Friday night I did, um, Arena Rex. Oh, Arena yeah. Rex by night. And you and got yourself a trophy. Yeah, I got a trophy for that. That, that there drinking horn. For, um, coming in dead last. Not, not even question whether I was or not. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was no tie for last, there was no question. No, I just came dead last and they gave me a drinking horn for it. I mean, yeah, you got something, right? Yeah. I'm not complaining. It's, just, it's a pretty nice, it comes with a nice stand and everything too. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I just didn't have a chance to use it. <laughs> right, right. But even when I got back to the hotel, I was like, no, I don't want to fill with water. I want to keep track of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta somehow get it home, so. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And uh, was that it? Just some shopping the rest of the time or? Yeah, a lot of sitting around, a lot of shopping. I was just checking out the other tournaments and stuff. Cool, cool. I spent a lot of time by that indoor fire they have. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because it's nice and warm in there. I know. I need. <laughs> but overall, good time? Oh, yeah. I'm already planning to go back next year. Awesome, awesome. I think I am, too. It was uh, a unique experience, but... Are you going to take anything next year? Maybe. Maybe I might, actually. Hopefully, I'll have my rats done. If I don't have my rats done in a year, I have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Then you get a bunch of metal uh, bells for them. I know. I really wanted to get the metal doom wheel. I saw, like, there's a bunch of people who sell old stuff, and <sighs> I almost got it, but I have no time to paint something for fun. Because I definitely wouldn't use that in a battle report. Well, finish your stuff and make time for fun. <laughs> okay. If Aaron says so, I will, then. There you go. All right. I'm going to go see what everyone else is up to. All right. Have a good day. Let's see what Matthew is up to. <laughs> Oh, he's talking. One second. Oh, I got a one second. Wow. Someone's why. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. That wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> Great. It was awkward for you. Uh, you know? Right? I thought orcs were being played in here. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing a little special. Okay. Um, you, we already played a game today. It was uh, Primaris Space Marines versus uh, Orcs. It was, mm -hmm. orcs. It, was regular, it was like more like regular armies. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how that went. Got a cool army yeah. display back there. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. These are all converted. You might want to spend some time on these. All right, I'll, I, will, I will let you guys talk and then we'll get better shots of them. Yes. Cool. And uh, that game went interestingly. So yeah. we have some time this afternoon. So we, we thought, what would happen? Because I have sixty or I have thirty Hellblasters that just came in on a commission from uh, DemonForceMinis.com. Okay. And so we had the question: Could thirty Hellblasters take on a Stompa? Because they're roughly the same points cost. Yeah. And so we're doing probably a best of three. Yeah. I mean, right this now is going this quick. is the first. We're not going to say what's happening. Yeah. He's shooting at me, and I'm shooting at him. And this will be in the vault, but it'll be like the best of three all in the vault. Okay, almost like a who would win, but not necessarily it is, with... It's totally a who would win. It's, okay. It's, yeah, it's okay. basically like Street Fighter, but weirder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, very powerful Hellblasters against a very powerful Stompa. Mm-hmm. So it should, be, it should be fun. That's what we're doing. Neat. But Neat. the interesting thing in this room is not this. It is this. He's got a completely customized orc army. This one, you, you may recognize it. He came in about a year and a half ago. Yeah. And essentially, almost every single faction is represented in this list. Now, you actually have every single faction represented in your art collection. Yeah. Because there's some Necrons there, too. That so, one's like, right there. But yeah. Oh, yes, he's right there. He's just yeah. not. There, there he is. He wasn't in the last game. So, we got some Necrons. Yeah. So, so let's, let's see if I can get this right. Okay. Because right? the names are all fun. So, we got a battle wagon with the Ard Top, which is a Rhino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got a truck, which is a Sister of Battle Immolator, so at least parts of it. We've got um, obviously the bikes, which are Space Marine bikes. That one's easy. We've got a Necron Destroyer, which is all as a Defcopter. Yeah. We've got well, let's see if I can get this. We got some Shooter Boys and stuff. They're all converted, but for the most part, they look like orcs. 
We got a Tarox right here, who's also a truck. We got a Venom with the other parts of the emulator from the uh, <laughs> the top of the emulator, which is the 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 Daka Custom Wacka Jetty blast, <laughs> Blasted Wazomb. It might as well be. Yeah. Uh, we've got another Death Copter. Actually, no, this is a Big Mech. No, it's a Death Copter. That's a Death Copter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shock Attack Gun right here, which is made out of who knows what. Those looks like a bunch of bits that he just slammed together and threw some glue on. Yeah. Except they actually look good, but that's how you make orcs. Hey, you do that, you like 50 50 shot to look orky. That's right. We got some race. Wraith Lords, who are uh, mind controlled by some Grots to well, be the, Mega Knobs. The Wraith Guard, but Oh, yes. sorry, Wraith Guard. Wraith Guard. Okay. We got a Zone Throat me, uh, mind controlled to be a Weird Knob. We've got some Gene Stealers and Termagants back here who have been mind controlled to be Commandos. <laughs> we've got in the back here, we've got, I, have, I don't remember what these, oh, this is uh, this is part of the terrain kit. Yep. The Servo Haulers. And this is that big old trike. And it's a Don Eagle jet bike. A Don Eagle jet it. bike on it, right? And then we got Logan Grimnar's chariot here with some custom boars. Where did you get the boars from? I didn't actually know. Where those those, fantasy. those the are fantasy, fantasy boars. Yeah, from the orc chariot, I believe. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And this is supposed to be what? A uh, waz, a waz boom daka thingy? Again, it might as well. That's be. that's. If you, if you just say waz daka blasta. Um, combi and you scrap. boom scrappa and you yeah. just put those in the order, people will actually not know, except for the orc players, that you're just making things up. So Even that is, then, that is a custom blast. Passing. That's a custom blast Daka Jet, whereas <laughs> this is a Daka Jet custom blast. Yeah, one custom of blast, the other blasts and customs. That's there funny. you go, okay. Yeah. But 100% uh, custom. That is fantastic. And it is so Good neat times. as you take a closer look at that. Yeah. Um, I got some more pieces that I'll show Dave. Oh, yeah, yeah, and this is a Grot. That wants oh, to be man. a knob. Who's this? Is actually a mega knob or just no, a knob? It's just a knob. That's a knob. So he pretends to be a knob. That's yeah. so he funny. He wants to be a deaf dread when he grows up. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So he's and for some reason, they respect school. that. Maybe because he's managed to pulverize enough of hey, them. Hey, he killed a tech marine, apparently. Like, okay. That's okay. Actually pretty high on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so, ridiculously cool looking army here on a nice, uh, obviously scenic mm -hmm. yeah. um, display cool. board. Yeah. Oh, I got some Tau stuff too. Well, convert other converted stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Tau's not shown on this board. No, I don't think. I got a win. Who knows? There might be some yeah. bits. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. this is pretty cool. So you're gonna see this in future beat map bat rep. Awesome. And then the Stompa one will also be a beat map bat rep. Who would win? Mm -hmm. Which will be in the vault. So the the battle report is free, and these ones are gonna be in the vault. Okay. And they're pretty so. cool. Yeah. Nice. Fun. Nice. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, quick synopsis of how Adepticon was for you. Oh, it was great. I went with my wife. We went just um, just for like two days. Like we went from the Thursday afternoon till Saturday afternoon, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, my point was more just to try to meet people and network with companies again. So, yep. You know, uh, a bit more business related. Yeah, exactly. The the stuff that's really worth the trip for the business. Uh, having the booth again this year just didn't make sense for many reasons. One, it was just not cost effective. I don't know if it was really worth having. I'm sure people appreciated it, but. I said, hey, we're not going to do it, and five of our guys went anyways. Yep. So it turns out I don't have to pay them. Uh, <laughs> and so that was fun. Um, yeah, so it was just, uh, I met with Martin from Games Workshop, I met with Matt from Printable Scenery, I met Liam and, uh, I forget his name, John or Dave from uh, Battlefront, bought a bunch of Battlefront terrain that's coming. Matt from Printable Scenery sent me a bunch of new stuff. Wonderful. Got into Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions, the card game. Me and my wife both, they did a demo game, and then we actually played in the first round of the event for it. So mm -hmm. That's fun. We've played it a couple times since we came home. Uh, it's a pretty fun game. It is. It is. Yeah. We're just talking about it with Josh. It's a, yeah, a it's, lot it's, of fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. I don't know if it's the best collectible card game I've ever played, but yeah. it's definitely very, very, very fun. It's fun and unique, and that's what I like about yeah. it. Yeah, and because I love Age of Sigmar lore. It's exactly. Kind of, you know, it's kind of fun to be like, yeah, this is my grot army, or this right. is my work list. Or, I think they've done a good wa good job of kind of doing the best job of translating a, a thing to a card as best as you can. Yeah, whatever. You don't, if, you, if, you don't have to. If you explain it right, it actually doesn't yeah, sound okay, too bad. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> but whatever. Exactly. It doesn't really matter. It's a card game compared to a miniature game compared to role playing games. Like, it's hard to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Met tons of people, got lots of inspiration. Um, yeah, the, the just going for merely looking at things and getting like conversion inspiration and things like that is also fantastic. I found because that's there not was the inspiration I'm talking about. No, I, I, I'm sure it's different than that, but I know I personally was just like, wow, there's so much crazy stuff here that I would have never thought of. Yeah, I'd say more so, for me is business inspiration. I had some good discussions with different uh, business people that gave me good ideas for mini wargaming in the future. 
Cool. Um, discussions about live streaming, discussions about studios, and just how to run things in general. Has, it was there's a lot of good insights with uh, talking with Tommy from Wargamer Girl. Being like, obviously, it's weird to say from Wargamer. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the name of the channel, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Girl yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and met and met with Wargamer Girl too. That was fun, and just yeah, seeing the guys from Spiky Bits and from The Long War, and I was just it was fun. It was mm -hmm. fun. We had a lot of fun. Wonderful. And Wonderful. My, my wife loved it too. She had a lot of fun. We're going to Gen Con, me and my wife. Ooh. Not on business, but just for fun. Wonderful. So if you're going to Gen Con, we'll be there. Yeah, Gen Con's a big one, so. Yeah. Not so much miniature war gaming, although it is there. As it's it a is. little bit of everything, isn't it? That it's, one? It's more general, like, war games. Role it's a bigger role playing scene. Yeah, okay. C &D thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. But there's also miniature game, war games there, also board games, also card games. It's a, yeah, a bit of everything. But I'd say role-playing definitely dominates it. Okay. At least. It's interesting to see. I from several years It's ago. interesting to see all these little conventions that kind of have, like, their specific thing, right? Yeah. Depticon's great. Like, it's, it's great because it's it's concentrated on miniature working. So everything there is pretty much related to that. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. All right. I will let you get back to it then. Bye-bye. I'm going to go this way. All right. Have, have fun. fun. Thanks. Whoop. So that was that. Whoop. A little focusing issue there, but we're going to go check on Luca now. Dun, dun, dun. Morning. What up, Luca? Hey, what up? I'm I, just hanging out in the corner. I, I, I know what you're trying to do. Every every now and then, uh, you might forget. This is Graham, by the way. He is nice from, to meet you, Graham. He is from... I met you this morning, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet. Yo, meet guys, Graham. Follow me on Instagram. What, are you going to plug your own Instagram right now? Dang, right. Shameless plug, go. Shameless plug, which Instagram? It's a uh, dank angel. <laughs> uh, four two zero K. Classic. Oh. Dank angel four twenty K. Beautiful. That is what a what a great name. <laughs> Canadian. What would they see on said Instagram? Just you? Some pictures yeah, you take? Yeah, all sorts of pictures. I make I make memes and uh, yeah. beautiful. Well, beautiful. If you guys like memes. Yeah, you guys like memes. <laughs> so he's from Toronto. He's from the Hogtown Group, uh, yeah, which yeah. is actually holding an event on the 13th, 14th. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was a big, her well, it's a big, like, 40K heresy event. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're actually co-writing the heresy narrative. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So that's Toronto, Ontario for any heresy people that yeah, are interested yeah. in July. Come on out. It's uh, going to be a full weekend of narrative, uh, narrative heavy gaming. Right. Uh, yeah, 10 spots. We have a waiting list right now. Uh, but, yeah, if you can make it out. Okay. Right what, uh, is that based in a store or? Uh, we're renting out a uh, license tall. Um, it's going to be, yeah, two days straight. Okay. Games. So how would they get more information if uh, they? Just go to Facebook, uh, hogtown40k.com. Uh, the heresy event's called Carrion's Call. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So anyone interested in that in the area? Yeah. It's a straight up weekend of heresy. Yeah, yeah, if you can make it down. Fantastic. So what do we got going on today then? Obviously, a little bit of heresy. This is heresy. This is 2,500 points of my Death Guard versus Graham's Dark Angels. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is uh, a roller coaster of a game. It's, it's, it's <laughs> something. Without, like... I was crushing it. Now I'm not. Right. I don't even know. It, it, it's, it's, it's classic 7th edition. Like, never give up in 7th edition. No. The game is so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. it, the it, swings it, are... It goes from, like, oh, my, my vehicles are... He's, he's doing nothing but, like, glancing my vehicles to the fact that, like, one single shot, boom, off my table kind of thing, destroying vehicles. Yeah, yeah. He just melt a lance, my Spartan, yeah. off the table, despite yeah. having armored ceramite. So, yeah. yeah you know. Possible kids. Right. <laughs> stay in school. Like, I, 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 like another example another spoiler turn one i do nothing i flub like pfft, missile launchers across. They're, they're five point missile launch right so you don't expect much but maybe a little bit of something they scratch some paint and then his turn like it's so good and then like oh my Levi first shot on my leviathan boom a claw dead blows off my arm right away like, oh, <laughs> this game's rough already that was like my one like good answer to all the vehicles that Dark uh -huh. like to bring a lot of vehicles usually yeah yep cool cool Always fun to play some Heresy, right, Luca? Yes, I love Heresy. I am a huge fan of the Heresy, and of course, anyone watching, when you come by to volunteer, if you want to play Heresy, uh, we're in Welland, Ontario, so Niagara region, near Buffalo, near Toronto, not too far from Kitchener. Those are like kind of the hot spots of Heresy people that might not be aware of where we are. Hot spot of Heresy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the whole southern Ontario kind of Buffalo area, tons and tons of Heresy players, except for Hamilton for whatever reason. Yeah, Just where Luca lives, yeah, guys. Yeah, there's no Heresy. <laughs> so I have to kind of go out of my way if I want to seek it out. But if you want to come by, miniwargaming.com slash challenge, 30K, talk to Josh, he's your man. 
Perfect. And yeah, usually 30k gas, we can get you in a little sooner than 40k. 100%. Yeah, okay. Not as long of a waiting list. I called last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he came up with a friend who's already kind of signed up. He's like, uh, I'll... Did you actually talk to Josh last night? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I wrote him an email a few weeks ago. So. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Cool, cool. Well, I will leave you guys to it. And, uh, I mean, things are going to die. Enjoy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> So that is pretty much everyone. I think Dave is, yeah, Dave's got his live stream going on. So that is what he is working on right now. I know he had a, a meeting earlier, I believe, about the new building and everything and the move and such. So, oh, I'll turn you back to me. And we're gonna head downstairs right now and see Lee. And we're in Lee's office. Coming out of his latest project. Yep. I don't know why I felt inspired to <laughs> come flying out of a box of Space Marines, but... Eh, it's a thing. So this is what you're working on right now, right? Well, this... not those, but yeah. Oh, this is... Oh, this is all done stuff already. Yep. This is all stuff that needs to be redone here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys have two seconds to think about why these things need to be redone. And this is why. New bases. These are some of the older models that are still left from the Sentinels of the Forge. And you've been working on this two days now? One day? Day and a half? 36 <laughs> days? 400 years? <laughs> 400 years, that's the one. Yep. No, since uh, Monday. Okay. Just plugging away at rebasing some of the old armies that yeah. have yet to be switched over. So you've got a bit of a list. Yes, I do. So this is... You did a little bit of the Chaos stuff. Yep. Last week or right? I think last week or the week before. I'm not sure. Okay. Get a couple some of the Black Legion stuff up and yeah. switch over for Dave. Now it's Sentinels of the Forge. I think you said Squigs after this. Yeah. Oh boy. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yes. But it's 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 relatively easy though. Okay. Because the sand and grass. Yep. Yep. So the ones I'm not looking forward to are the 30k. Uh, wood bearers. Right, those ones have those scenic bases, right? Yes. And you gotta, that's the thing is, the whole, mo most of our armies that are getting rebased are getting to this base, which is, yeah. I mean, pretty simple, nothing special about it, but it'll be kind of nice to have everything as consistent as we can. Because yeah. one of the biggest things that we have when, you know, we, we commission out all of our stuff is the bases tend to not match all the time, because yeah. it's sometimes tricky to get people to. Yeah, that's why when we did the. Uh the painting partner program mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of the horse heresy stuff. Yep. We actually asked people not to do the bases. Right. Because I had actually done like the beginning of all the studio army. Yeah, you, you did the first chunk and then it was just getting things filled out and then you can just finish off the bases and yeah. you don't have, like I mean, uh, I guess everything in here. There, here's one. Right, here's an example. This guy's base is gray. Yeah. And uh, these guys actually aren't too bad. But that's because the Primaris stuff was done by Lee as well. So most of it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's me personally. I think there should be like a consistent scheme mm -hmm. in every army. Mm -hmm. It's like all the 30k Silencers all have like the lava base. Yes. My Emperor's children all have like the broken up masonry stuff. Yep, the marble esque looking yeah. crackiness, cool. Words, yeah, cool. yeah. So yeah, that's and they're all on the wrong bases and never get used. So might as well just. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that's the other thing because people tend to. I know at least Luca is the one who doesn't like using anything on the old bases, so no. he just chooses to either use things that are all on the bases or you know. Except for wood bears. Yeah, exactly. The wood bears, I think, are the only ones that. No. I mean, because that's the whole army. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to put in some work. Those. Yeah, there is uh because I know at least Sentinels of the Forge. We've got an Ultramarines army that's not all on the right bases. Yeah, yeah white scars. White scars. But that's mostly bikes though. Okay, true. I think there's too many twenty fives in there. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of these armies, like when someone says, Could you rebase my army? You think like, oh boy. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to rebase everything. You only have to rebase the twenty fives on the Marines, because the scouts still use them. Yeah, something like in here, we got Terminators. Yeah. They haven't changed. No. Scouts haven't changed. No. But uh, just the, the, the marines. assault marines, tactical marines, devastators. devastators. 
all that kind of stuff. Yes. Some characters, which is what this it looks like. Yeah, a lot of that's never going to get used again, but still, I'm going to do it. Might as well. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that, and we're oh, where'd it go? It's right oh, right there right it is. Too. There it is. This is your kind of side project here. Yeah. We got Scorpion Man, whose name is I. What is his name? Do you know what his name is? Uh, Scorpion Man. Scorpion. From the. Because he has Snail Man. No, he has Scorpion Man. Exactly. That's for Josh. Yeah. That's the Forge World. For, for, for I, something. I don't know his name. Yeah. Some mechanical sounding name. I... It, it has probably one of the craziest bases I've ever seen. This nonsense thing. Like, I mean, you know, we've all seen seen the bases for the uh, Primarchs and stuff. Yeah. But this one is huge. <laughs> and uh, again, because he's all... And he's, actually, he's actually walking, like... Down it, right? No, he's walking uh, across it. Oh, right, so, so he's he, sideways. Yeah, so when you put him together, his torso, that's in the middle, is actually facing up. Mmm. So if you put him together and put him on a regular base... Oh. So... So he's kind of leaning, so that's yeah. why you kind of have to use that base there. Yeah, but it's pre-made base. It's, mm -hmm. it's fine. Yeah, that, that's one less thing to think about. Just paint it. Let's get it done. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Just rebasing stuff. And these are the last ones of the Sentinels of the Forge, so... That's good. I actually just went through all the boxes and just picked out stuff. Okay. But the, I just went upstairs with the scouts and the tacticals, mm -hmm. and that was an entire tray after I rebased them. Mm -hmm. like all these assault marines were in that box to begin with. Oh. That's how much bigger their footprint has become. They, oh, I see, right. They used to fit in one box, yeah. right? And but now they can't because yeah. of the bigger bases. That's a thing. Yep. Well, good thing we're getting new storage at the new place, so yes. that should solve hopefully that problem. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> well, that is all for today's show. I'm going to turn you back around to me. Oh, sorry for the vomits. <laughs> <laughs> but that has been all for this week. If you want to check out the Cullen's Corner portion of today's Open Vault, make sure to be a Vault member. If you're not already a Vault member, seven day free trial. Do it. It's free. Seven days. And then you got 30 days to cancel. You still get your money back. So it's basically a 37 free trial. Exactly. So, how do I... 37 day free trial. Do it. Sign up. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.